Do you ever feel like you are practicing your reflections with clients and you are just going nowhere? Sometimes I hear from new learners of motivational interviewing that they are doing a lot of intentional reflective listening practice, but it's like they're paddling in circles and clients just stay stuck. And I'm like, yes, aha, I know what's happening here. <laughs> the dilemma is that we need to get really good at complex reflections that not just relay our empathy, but that move towards that change direction. So today's topic is reflections that go somewhere. Okay, so let's take a couple examples. Let's say we have a client who's really struggling with um, I don't know, increasing their exercise. And they are saying to you, oh, I just like, I really want to, but it's so hard. I'm so tired on the mornings. This time change has really gotten to me, the pandemic, you know, and they're listing all the reasons why it's really just not going well for them. If what we are reflecting to them is it has been so hard, the pandemic stuff is really just wiping you out then what is likely to happen is the client is going to talk more about that, which in motivational interviewing, that's sustained talk. That is the language that argues for status quo, not change, right? That is the opposite of change talk. And what we reflect, we are likely to get more of. So if what we are reflecting is really empathetic, change, uh, sustained talk, if we're reflecting empathetic sustained talk, then we are likely to stay in that pattern of not change with the client. Whereas if what we are reflecting is, on one hand, it has been really hard for you to summon the energy and you are still trying to keep this desire for exercise on your radar. Okay, that's the change talk part because we hear the person say they really want to fill in the blank, you know, do this change. And so what we want to do is make sure we are reflecting the change talk as a part of our reflections. So think about it. <laughs> I also th I think about my, my kids, you know, they're like, I'm like, do you want your carrots or do you want some ice cream? You know, they're going to say ice cream. That's the last thing that came out of my mouth. Well, they're going to say ice cream anyways, but the last thing that we say is likely to be guiding the conversation in that direction. So if, if in a double-sided reflection, for example, and I'm going to give you that um, complex reflection handout for a little fun practice. If in a double-sided reflection, you're putting the change talk on the front side and the sustain talk on the back side, then you're likely to be guiding that conversation right back into the stuckness. Whereas if you're doing sustain talk to change talk, then you are guiding that conversation in the direction of change. So let's take an example of somebody who's maybe trying to cut back on their drinking. And they say, I know it's just such a habit. I drink with my family every night, um, um, but it does kind of mess with my sleep. But I, I don't know. I don't really know what else to do. It kind of at least helps me get to sleep. Um, so what I heard there, I'm like, draw a line down the middle. I hear sustained talk. I drink with my family. It helps me get to sleep. And then I hear change talk. It really messes with my sleep, right? Because later in the night, alcohol messes with sleep. So, and sleep cycles. That's the change talk. So we would choose to reflect on one hand, it helps you get to sleep. And on the other hand, you're aware it really destroys your night of sleep, right? So that's that change talk side. <laughs> we are wanting to make sure in our reflections that go somewhere that we are reflecting the change talk that we hear. So not just practicing complex reflections, but practicing complex reflections that have some, some of that change talk in them. That is when it is going to get you out of rowing in circles and get you rowing somewhere with your clients. Let me know how it goes.